بسم الله بسم الله بسم الله بسم الله الحمد لله you know I'm feeling quite old because every time I introduce a speaker I know them personally I've met them and they've touched my life in one way or another our next speaker alhamdulillah um, actually circumcised my son so that tells you how close a relationship we have with each other many many years ago and at that time his talk on life and death a cassette that i bought from the young muslims inspired me to join the organization and uh, we've become family friends over the years he's become a teacher to myself and uh, been an inspiration as the president of the islamic society of britain uh, a few years ago and for young muslims alhamdulillah um, he's mashallah been studying for several years while still trying to retain his uh, daytime job as a gp in uh, yorkshire and lancashire um, he's alhamdulillah studied with some of Europe's leading scholars, including the Sheikh um, Abdullah Al Jadai, on the issue of hadith for 15 years, acquiring specialist knowledge of Ulum al Quran, Asul al Fiqh, and Ulum al Hadith. And presently, he's studying comparative fiqh. He lectures on Aqidah, Asul al Fiqh, and Sirah. Dr. Munir Ahmad. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen As-salatu was salam Ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd All praise is due for Allah alone We praise him We seek his guidance and forgiveness And we send peace and prayers on his final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who he sent as a mercy to the whole of creation. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Peace and mercy of Allah be with you all. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala purify our hearts, make our intentions sincere for his pleasure alone in everything that we do and we pray to Allah that he blesses this gathering that he increases as any man through this coming together and that he puts love between our hearts and through that also he teaches us mercy towards others the topic the manner of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is indeed not only a crucial topic but a vast topic and when we talk about manner we mean of course as they say in Arabic saluk or uslub his behavior his method and his way sallallahu alayhi wasallam in other words his character his khuluq or akhlaq and before as a way of introduction you know one of our problems is that we sometimes misplace the crucial parts and the important aspects of the character of Rasulullah and give priority to other things above that and hence we sometimes miss the point brothers and sisters and I blame primarily our religious people in producing that kind of anomaly before blaming our general masses character was less to do with appearance and more to do with behavior and character and how we deal with other people and the state of our hearts and minds Sometimes we lifted the appearances to a level and we reduced the character and the sunnah and appearance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and that's it. And actually therefore, we gave pre 
precedence to appearances. Whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, At-taqwa ha-huna wa yushiru ila sadrihi bi thalatha marra. He said, taqwa is here. And he pointed to his breast and heart three times in the khulus, in the purity of intention, in the decency on what you feel inside and in your behavior. In other words, don't judge it from appearance. وَلَمْ يَقُولْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم التَّكْوَى هَا هُنَا أو هَا هُنَا The taqwa is here in my turban or taqwa is my appearance. Sometimes we got carried away with appearances. With appearances. And you know, appearances are linked very much with tradition and culture. Including that of Rasulullah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم including that and giving precedence therefore it became a way of judging people you know what kind of imam is that we decide the taqwa of a person in the case of a male by the size of his turban or his beard or his thobe what kind of jilbab he's wearing on Friday I delivered the Jummah Khutbah. Jill Hicks, who was here, I spoke to her afterwards, and her sister with her was saying, she was saying, where's the Imam? And I was standing there at the <laughs> at front of the, of the gathering. Because she expected a particular image, which we also expect. Don't get me wrong. My brothers who have long beards and who wear the thobe or the turban, nothing wrong with that. If you feel that as following the Sunnah, but you should also understand that that's not the only interpretation of following Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And others came with other interpretations. For example, that wearing the, pe the clothes of the people amongst whom you live is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because he wore what Abu Lahab wore. He wore what Abu Jahl wore. In fact, Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl had big turbans on their heads as well. And Abu Jal had a beard as well. And be keeping a beard was, majority of men did well over actually. And yes, the Prophet said some things about, for example, the beard. He said some things to do with the wearing of the thobe. La yandurullaha sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maqal, la yandurullaha man jarra izaruhu. That Allah does not look on Yawm al Qiyamah at the person who drags their garment behind them. And in one riwayah, which I just mentioned, he said, out of arrogance. And therefore, some fuqaha came with the idea that keeping trousers below the ankle or garments, letting them go below the ankle, was to do with arrogance. But if you want to follow the idea, no. That's it, it's just what he says we do that, that's fine. But don't look down on those whose trousers and garments go below their ankle. Because it was tradition, as it is in royalty today, and amongst rich Arabs, and Bedou uh, uh, rich Arabs in Mecca and other places who were arrogant and of noble family in their idea to drag their garments on the, on the floor behind because of pride. The problem was here, primarily, that's why Abu Bakr Siddiq عنه, he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, my garment comes, drags sometimes behind me. The Prophet ﷺ said, you are not from amongst them. It was an exemption from Abu Bakr, but the idea was that you are not one who's doing it full of pride. So that's another understanding. Appearances, very little came. Yes, for the women, khimar. Allah SWT mentions in the Quran, وَلْيَضْرِبْنَا بِخُمُرِهِنَّ عَلَىٰ جُيُوبِهِنَّ And let them put their khimars over their cleavage area. Allah SWT mentions that. Clearly. And he mentions it. And the appearance in regards to jilbab. Some people got the idea jilbab means a long coat in black. 
But Quran doesn't mention anything about long coat. It uses the word jilbab. Yudnina jalabi bihin, as in Surah Al Ahzab. When we look at that, Yudnina means draw near. It doesn't mean dress up, it just means to do that, to draw near. And if we look at classical scholars, in dictionaries of classical scholars like Ibn Faris and Ibn Mandur, we find that the best translation of Jalabib is like a chowder, like a shawl. A shawl, not a long coat. It's a difference of opinion. My point of raising these and other things, don't judge others. If you wear the long coat, alhamdulillah, you are a sister in Islam. If you have a long beard, you're a brother in Islam. If you wear a turban, you're a brother in Islam. If you don't wear a turban, you are a brother in Islam. If you have a short beard or no beard, you are a brother in Islam. And you know, even the Khamar issue, in these dress issues, in the beard issue, all the hadith, if you look at the authentic hadith, the best you can come, and I, and I studied and researched this topic with my teacher in great detail. All the ahadith came later in time. And as Ibn Taymiyyah says, it came to make distinction when the Muslim Ummah became established and strong and they became the trendsetters. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to formulate a new personality and a new part of it was appearance. And that's why all the hadith came with khaliful mushrikun, khaliful yahud, be opposite and different. All the hadith to do with beard. But what was being really stressed on was clipping the mustache. It's like saying some of these people from the mushrikun and the yahud, etc., they grow their mustaches long and they shorten their beards or remove their beards. So the Prophet is saying, it's okay, grow your beard, but clip your mustache. And stress came in other hadith stressing on the clipping of the mustache more than the beard. When the Prophet said, those who do not clip their mustache are not from amongst us. He never said that about the beard. Nothing authentic from that. No authentic hadith came in regards to that. Stressing more on this and less on this. That's why. And also it came in the same way that other things came to the Sahaba. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi encouraged again with the same idea, Khaliful Yahuda wa Nasara, be opposite to those who are from the Yahud and the Nasara Christians and Jews. They do not dye their gray or white hairs, you dye them. And some Sahaba did and others didn't. We know that, it's fact. And the ones who did dye them did not look down on those who didn't dye them because they know it was just a recommendation as this was as well as this was as well.